So the title of this presentation, deuterium depletion from tissue culture to human clinical study. I also start with Harold Clayton Ray, who discovered the uh, deuterium, and later he was awarded with the Nobel Prize. Uh, so it was really almost a, exactly 80, 81 years ago. We know due to the 100% mass difference between the hydrogen and deuterium, the deuterium behave differently in chemical reaction, and this is mainly due to the, the big difference in the vibrational frequency. Due to this difference, it is also well known that these bonds split much faster, as was mentioned by uh, Richard and, and Ishtan also. So, and it is called isotopic effect. The other well-known effect is that the ratio in a surface water is about 6,600 to 1, and we are talking about 150. We know that in the ocean it's 155, and as uh, Ishtar mentioned, it, it could be different in, in different regions of the Earth, but we could calculate that that would be a, an average uh, deuterium concentration of the surface water. So from this uh, number, we can calculate that in millimole, there is 60.8 millimole deuterium in a normal surface water. And uh, it is also known that in living organisms, the deuterium level is about 12, 40 millimole per liter. And if we compare it to the calcium level of the, or the magnesium level of the human blood, we could see that the deuterium concentration is six times higher in the calcium, 10 times higher in the magnesium. So all these facts were well known for decades. But everybody ignored the, the presence of the nature occurring deuterium for 60 years. And at the beginning, when the, when the deuterium was discovered, the D2O was used in an extremely high concentration. So they used it from, uh, from 0 to 100 percent, and they tested the effect of heavy water. And the conclusion was that the D2O in a high concentration is toxic for living organisms. So this is a good example that when the plant was watering with heavy water, the higher was the D2O concentration, the lower was the shorter was the plant. Uh, even recently, paper has been published using heavy water, and they checked how the pancreatic cancer cells could grow in vitro, and they also could confirm that the heavy D2O concentration can inhibit the cell growth of, of uh, these cancer cell lines. But the final conclusion was all this thing that <clears throat> simple organisms like bacteria and fungi can tolerate the extremely high DTO concentration, but the higher organisms, plants and animals resist to full deuteration. Uh, there was mice. They were also uh, uh, replaced the normal water with heavy water, and it was clear that uh, 20% of the D2O was tolerated by the mice, but, uh, if, but not higher. And the final conclusion was that 15, 20% of the D2O is, is real toxic for, for higher animals. Later, other kind of paper was published, and this paper proved that there is a strong discrimination in plants, and that was also mentioned earlier. So this paper said that, and uh, Richard uh, also mentioned that, depending on what kind of way the plant fixes the carbon dioxide, uh, there is different discrimination in the plant. That paper said that RJ could discriminate between the two hydrogen in light, but not in dark. And here's another paper which can be very important for us. Uh, that paper says that deuterons cannot replace in proton transport in proton in active transport processes yeast, suggesting that the hydrogen ATPase make difference between the two hydrogen isotopes, so the deuterium cannot be the substrate, only the hydrogen. So these were also the papers about the deuterium, and it helps to, to, to know more about the deuterium, the real nature. But the question arises that whether, what role, if any, does deuterium playing in living organisms? The other question can be, can the effect of deuterium be considered as a sole consequence of the isotope effect, or a specific fractionation of hydrogen isotopes in metabolized act as an important signal for the cell? Or we can ask, does the change in DH ratio regulate the cell processes, or in the signal transduction pathway or proliferation of metabolism? So to, to get the answer for this question, we have one way, 
if we prepare deuterium depleted water and causing uh, deuterium depletion and to check what kind of uh, effect can be of this deuterium depletion. So the, in the very first experiment and the very, one of the simplest experiment to see how the cells could grow in vitro if we use deuterium depleted medium. And that was the first uh, uh, results we published in Febstatters. And this is the water content. The medium contains 150 ppm. So this is a normal deuterium level. And we found when it was lower, 25 or 30 ppm, that inhibited the cell growth in vitro. And it was also important when we slightly increased the D2O concentration, that stimulated the cell growth. When we go even further, that inhibited the cell growth. So close to the natural level, when we reduce the deconcentration, that slightly inhibited cell growth, but increasing slightly stimulated cell growth. Uh, there was an other experiment carried out in California, the Oncotech Incorporation. Here we also asked them to check whether we can influence the cell growth in vitro. And the answer was that prostate, breast, and melanoma cell line were uh, also inhibited, reducing the deconcentration. It was also clear that the sensitivity was different of the different cell lines. So the melanoma could adapt very rapidly to the lower deconcentration. Meantime, the prostate and breast cancer uh, was inhibited for 24 and 48 hours. Uh, we also asked another question. In the former experiment, we kept the cells on the same deconcentration. In this experiment, we decided to reduce the deconcentration step by step. So 150, 60, 55, 51, 46. And in this experiment, the medium was replaced twice per one day, three, four, three times, uh, five times per two days, or five times for per uh, three days. And as you know, more times we reduce the deuterium level, the bigger was the inhibitory effect of the media, suggesting again that somehow the cells necessary the natural level of deuterium. Uh, we carried out several experiments, and I tried to show a couple of examples. So in one experiment, we know that there are uh, kinases, phosphatases involved in the cell cycle regulation, and we checked whether we can modify the expression of these genes. And this experiment, I also lost a couple of colors. We could find that <clears throat> this kinase activity was ex uh, in, uh, and, and the uh, gene expression was increased in deuterium depleted water. Meantime, these genes expression was suppressed in deuterium depleted water. These are kinases or other enzymes having key role in electron transport. Another experiment <clears throat> it is well known when there is a signal, a uh, growth hormone bind to the membrane, and that triggers the signal. Uh, within two minutes, there is a phosphorylated kinase band. And that happened in normal water but not in deuterium depleted water, suggesting that somehow the D depletion can intervene into that signal uh, transduction system. It is also known that the primary target of the uh, chemo prevention is a so-called COX-2 gene. The COX-2 gene responsible for the cyclooxygen synthesis, and that enzyme synthesizes the prostaglandin. In most of the cancer cells, the COX-2 gene is overexpressed, and the prostaglandin has a key role that, that these cells can multiply so fast. So we checked whether we can intervene with that COX-2 gene. First, we checked the cell growth of the HT29. This is a colon cell line. Uh, this is a 150 ppm, 80 ppm, 20 ppm. So the lower was the deconcentration again. It was a clear inhibitory effect. 200 ppm, we slightly could stimulate the cell growth. At the same time, we checked the COX-2 gene expression, and there was a clear correlation, suggesting that the D depletion could inhibit and could reduce the COX-2 gene expression. And at the same time, the intracellular prostaglandin level also was reduced <coughs> in the deuterium depleted medium. But the question is whether it has any role, direct role in this, uh, that the D depletion, D depleted water can uh, inhibit the cell growth. Uh, in another experiment, we add back the prostaglandin. And here is the results when the cells grow in deuterium depleted medium. 
but when we add back the prostaglandin 1, 10, 100 micromole, nanomole per liter, we could diminish the inhibitory effect of deuterium depleted water, suggesting that could be a cause effect relationship that deuterium depleted water inhibit, for example, the COX2 gene expression, and that cause a reduced prostaglandin level, but when we add back the prostaglandin, we can compensate the inhibitory effect of the DTW. So the question is, how can we explain these results? So one explanation can be that uh, it is well known for decades that when a growth hormone is binding to the membrane, that will activate the sodium hydrogen antiport system, which will cause a pH shift. So there is a reduction in the hydrogen ion concentration, so it's a pH increase. That was published, in, for example, in the PNAS. In a Nature, there was a paper published that the hydrogen ATPSG was isolated and the animal cell line was used to transform. And they could prove that the ATPs were sitting in the membrane of the cell, throwing out the hydrogen, and they could prove the pH shift. But the real surprise was that this cell line caused tumor in nude mice and showed tumorous phenotype in vitro. So no one could explain how is it possible that this ATPS gene behaves as an oncogene. So we say when there is a signal binding to the membrane and activate the hydrogen transport system, that we are to prefer to eliminate the hydrogen, which will result in changes in the DH ratio. And we suggest that the changing DH ratio would be a key signal for the cell, and in normal case, the cell will divide. When we are using deuterium repeated water, even the hydrogen transport system is activated, the cells are not able, or it takes much longer time for cancer cells, to lift up the DH ratio to the threshold, and this is the reason that no cell division and, and the whole metabolism could be disturbed with the lower deuterium level, and that caused the, the necrosis of the tumor cells. So the question is whether the reducing deconcentration can influence the membrane transport system and the pH regulation. I would go back to plants again. We published a paper in the Japanese Journal of Deuterium Sciences. <clears throat> in this experiment, we used Elodel, which is an aquatic plant. And the experiment was we simply replaced the, no the plant from normal water to deuterium depleted water. And what we found that in light, immediately there was an acidification of the external media, which means that the cells start to pump out the hydrogen, recognizing that there is lower deuterium level. That was true in light. <clears throat> you could see that in normal water and deuterium depleted water, the direction was just the opposite. In light, it was in the same direction. And to control whether this is true, that hydrogen ion appears in the external space. We checked what's going on inside. So here's the acidification of the external uh, medium. At the same time, we used uh, a dye to, to check the pH intracellularly, and there was an increase in the pH. So suggesting that somehow this is the hydrogen ATPs in the plant was influenced by the deuterium level of the water. In animal tissue, oh, sorry. Yeah, the colors are nice. Uh, so in animal tissue, we, did a, we carried out an, an, another experiment. In this experiment, we used an acid load, which means we reduced the pH in the cell, and we checked how the cells can uh, adjust the pH to the normal level. And here's another curve. And the point was that this process was different in normal water comparing to the Uh, due to depleted water. In that case, we can say that the sodium hydrogen antiport, the ameliorate sensitive sodium hydrogen antiport, take part in that process, and somehow again, the due depleted water influence that membrane process. So this is what we say today, that that could be the, the key fractionation mechanism, that the membrane transport will prefer to eliminate the hydrogen, and that causes a shift in the pH, in, in, in the DH ratio. The question, the answer for the question is, uh, so we suggest that the nature occurring deuterium has a key role in the cell cycle regulation. We suggest that the changing DH ratio can be a signal to the induction of numerous cell processes. 
and this suggests that the changing DA ratio simultaneously can regulate the expression of genes and, and uh, certain enzyme activity. We also say that there should be a submolecular regulatory system within the cell, and that would be a new target to, to develop, for example, anti-cancer drug. That was the first part of my presentation. The next part, I, I would like to show you what is the consequence of deuterium depletion when we use animals or, or living organisms. In a very first, one of the very first uh, mice experiment, we, we, used a, we used a PC3, this is a human prostate cancer cell line, and we transplanted mice with uh, prostate cancer, and these all the animals were kept on normal water for 18 days. After that, in one group, we changed the normal water for deuterium depleted water, and 12 day, days later, we killed the animals and counted the cells uh, whether they are being in mitosis or apoptosis. The first sign was that the average tumor volume, volume was 3.7 cube centimeter in the <coughs> control group, but less than one cube centimeter in the treated group. But when we counted, how many cells are in mitosis and mitosis, we found that it was the ratio almost the opposite in the group uh, consuming deuterium depleted water, <laughs> suggesting that the deuterium depleted water uh, caused the tumor necrosis. Later, we started to, to treat dogs having breast cancer. That was the very first dog with a 10 times 6 centimeter breast cancer. And five months later, three, uh, 6 times 4 centimeter, 3 times 2 10 centimeter. Which, and all the other dogs, we, we could uh, see a tumor regression, or in that case, the, the metastasis disappeared. Again, the technique was simple. Normal water was replaced with deuterium depleted water. Uh, the animals consumed that water, which caused a decrease in deconcentration in the animal, and that was the consequence. In Hungary, we could register uh, deuterium depleted water as an anti cancer drug for veterinary use and that was registered in 1990. So it means that several uh, vets could use in the past uh, 13 years. Here is a summary involving about 150 animals, so breast cancer and tumor cancer. Uh, if we see that part of this table, we could see that roughly 50% of the animals we could cure with deuterium depleted water, either, al either alone with deuterium depleted water or with combination with, with surgery. Of course, this is only 50%. The question is how can we even increase the efficacy of duty in depletion? So we carried out experiment to use uh, injection formulation. This is 25 ppm uh, physiological salt solution. And we used it to inject the, the tumor and the surrounding area of the tumor. Here's a couple of examples. <clears throat> This uh, dog has a huge tumor on the neck with hemangiosarcoma. sarcoma. Uh, it received the chemotherapy and radiotherapy, and that was the final results. So they wanted to kill the animal. After the treatment with deuterium depletion, here is four weeks later, 10 weeks later, and 14 weeks later. And after years, these animals were alive. The other example, <clears throat> this is a breast cancer. It's, it's, you could see it's growing down and infiltrate the, the deeper part of the body. Uh, that was five weeks later. After the injection, the tumor was rejected from the animal, and it was very easy to remove the rest of the tumor. And here's another example. That was a erectile tumor. There was a complete remission. But at certain time of the treatment, we cut out a small piece of tissue, and we checked it. And we could say at the beginning it was adenocarcinoma, which means cancer. Uh, four weeks later, it was said adenoma. So from malignus, it moves to benignus. And eight weeks later, we could find only heavy lymphoid infiltration. So no tumor cells were, but the immune system worked to, to eliminate all the cancer cells. Of course, the primary aim is to, to have a human anti-cancer drug. So that is our primary aim, and this is what we are never going to give up. Uh, we could run one phase two double mind clinical trial. Uh, it was run with, with also with prostate cancer patient. In the trial, we evaluated 44 patients. Uh, 22 just by chance belong to the treated group, 22 to the control group. 
Everybody received the conventional therapy, and the trial lasted for four months, and those who were lucky consumed water with 85 ppm. Those who were belongs to the placebo group, they consumed uh, normal water. At the end of the trial, we found that when we add the, the size of the tumor regression, we found that 160 cube centimeter decrease was in the treated arm, but only 54 in the placebo arm. And that was the reason that the urination system uh, uh, problem disappeared in this group. At the end of the trial, we could conclude that in seven patients we could improve, we could get improvement, but only one in the uh, placebo group. 11 showed no, 11 and 30 showed no uh, change, and there was progression in four cases in the treated group, but eight in the control group. So we could also say that significantly more people showed improvement during the trial. And I mentioned it lasted only for four months. Uh, one year later, we checked the survival rate, and we found that two people died in the treated group, but nine in the control group. Again, significantly higher was the death rate in the placebo group. <clears throat> so beside the phase two double my clinical trial, we followed several patients, and those who are not familiar with oncology, I would say, to de defin uh, define the median survival time. So I've, unfortunately, the oncology therapy is not about how many percent of the people are cured. We are talking about we are, whether we are able to increase the median survival time. And the, media, the length of the time from either the diagnosis or the treatment of the disease, such as cancer, to the point at which the half of the patients diagnosed with the disease are still alive. So the time within half of the people die or the other half of the people still alive, we are talking about this is the median survival time. And uh, beside the phase two clinical trial, we followed an additional 91 a prostate cancer patient. Uh, that result was just published in the Journal of Cancer Therapy recently. You can get a copy. And <clears throat> from this population, we could make a very homogeneous cancer population. So here is a population with 20 patients, and they were homogeneous because they were prostate cancer, and they got a bone, di a bone metastasis before one year after the diagnosis. And when we checked the median survival time, it was 64.8 months. And the historical country is 15, 20 months. So it means that those prostate cancer patients in that stage, we could get a threefold increase in the median survival time. If we see these 12 patients, they have prostate cancer and they have a bone metastasis, but it's appeared one year later, later than the diagnosis was. In that case, we couldn't calculate the median survival time because within 100, uh, 103 years, that was the cumulative follow-up period, two people died, which means there was one death case within uh, 51.5 years. So beside this 91 prostate cancer patient, we followed 1,450 other cancer patients uh, the cumulative follow-up period was over 5,000 years. These patients consumed lutein depleted water almost 2,000 years. The period between the diagnosis and the start of the DDW treatment was about 2,500 years. And we followed these people over 3,000 years. So we have a huge database that we collected in the last uh, 20 years. Uh, I, I mentioned that we collected those patients who consumed the DDW at least for 91 days. And the reason is, when we checked the survival rate, one year survival rate of the patient who consumed lower than three months or higher than, longer than three months, we could find that those who consumed less than 90 days, only 11% live longer than one day. So it means these people didn't have time to intervene because they are mostly in the absolute late stage. So this is the reason that we selected our population. We are estimating and valuing the results for those people who had consumed longer than 90, 91 days. If we check the distribution 
person distribution of the major type of cancer in the follow-up population, you could see the four leading cancer is breast, colon, rectum tumor, lung cancer, and prostate cancer, and these are involved here. 50% of the people who die in cancer belongs to these four uh, uh, cancer type. And these distribution roughly covering the same uh, what we can see in worldwide or in Hungary. When we check the median survival time of these uh, 1,450 uh, people, we could see that it is 9.5 months. I could say this is roughly double what, the peop what we can see worldwide. When we check the median survival time, depending on how long the people could consume the utin depleted water, you could see three, between three to six months, six to nine, the median survival, and we started from the treatment of the DDLB consumption. So that was the months which increased 10, 27, 70, 81, and 126 months, uh, which shows a quite clear correlation that the longer they could they consume the longer they could live. We could make two big categories uh, with this 100 for, uh, 1,450 patients because we find that 1,320 started the treatment with DDW that they have cancer, and 130 started the treatment of the, uh, of the consumption of DDW without cancer. So they were diagnosed with cancer, but when they started the consumption of DW, they were cancer-free. And this is very important. The <clears throat> median time which lasted between the diagnosis and the start of DDW, it was 190 days in the upper group, but 100 about in the, in the other group. And here you see the average time. It means that those who started in remission, they started within one year after the diagnosis, those who started in, with a tumor, they started uh, about two years after the diagnosis. If you see the details of the uh, 1,320 patients, here you can see the, the big numbers. And uh, the median survival time was 8.3 years uh, for this population, which is much more higher, which is expected. And within that period, we lost uh, 410 patients. And considering that the average, uh, considering the cumulative follow-up period of, was almost 5,000 years, so we could say that one death per 12 years. When we check the other group, so they started in our mission. Here, the cumulative follow-up period of, was uh, over 600 years. These patient uh, uh, were followed from the start of DDW for 500 years, and they consumed uh, DDW over 200 years. And uh, in that case, we were not able to calculate the median survival time because eight people out of the 130 died within that 615 uh, years cumulative uh, follow-up period. And I would say that Th that would be one of the take-home message. So we believe, and we could say based upon our results, if the deuterium depletion would be integrated into the cancer therapy and all the cancer patients who had been uh, cured, uh, so the tumor was removed by surgery or chemotherapy or radiotherapy caused a complex tumor regression, and after the therapy, these people should consume deuterium depleted water we could uh, extremely reduce the, uh, if, uh, the chance to get cancer again. So it means here we have, here we have one death per 70 uh, 76.8 years, which is quite a big lifespan, I would say. Uh, if I have to conclude all these results and, and the main goal of this whole conference, so we should say that based upon our results and combining with all the knowledge what we know about deuterium, discrimination, fractionation, uh, we could say that the deuterium uh, has another role, not only being there 
and having some, some, some role in the living organism, it has a very, very specific role, and the nature used out that there is a heavy hydrogen and, and light hydrogen, and there is a very specific system which modified the DTM hydrogen ratio, and that uh, changes is a very specific signal for the cell. It means we have a new target, and this is the way how we we hope that we can develop a new type of anti-cancer drug and in, in integrating into, into uh, oncotherapy, we will be really able to, to cure cancer and fight in, uh, and, and win in the fight against cancer. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Gabor. Please, questions, comments, please. It's, it, it, it's a very interesting problem, isn't it? Um, have you or has anybody else yet looked at turnover numbers of some of the key enzymes, one thinks perhaps of the kinases, uh, in deuterated, deuterium depleted water, so in vitro studies on the enzyme activities, whether this is actually having an influence on their rate of reaction? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if, if I remember, 20 years ago we, we tested a couple of enzymes, we didn't see a real big difference. And we don't know really what kind of enzyme we should see. Uh, but tomorrow, Boros, uh, uh, Laszlo, we will we'll present some results. And from that results, we can figure out what's going on on a metabolic system. Uh, do you have another? Yeah, well, I was uh, just, just uh, uh, another, another comment. Um, uh, water structure. And uh, there's been a lot of debate about water structure. And there were the famous publications in Nature, what about 15 years ago, I suppose, about deleted de depleted water retaining structure in a way that it remembered the existence of molecules, the structures of molecules that weren't actually there. Um, nevertheless, water, I think that was a, a rubbish, but um, the, the, the water does is structured, and of course deuterium hydrogen bonding is very important in water structure, so when you do place a hydrogen with a deuterium or remove the amount of deuterium, you, you might change the bulk water structure. Has anybody had any thoughts and, and experimental approaches to, to that bulk water problem? Yeah, uh, we haven't carried out any experiment like uh, which uh, uh, would show that there is some, some differences using uh, in, in the structure. Of course, if you use the deconcentration, the, the structure should be different, but we don't know how, how influence that, that whole process. Laszlo. So, um, so one of the uh, historic information that, um, that has been available for, I would say, at least 50 years is citrate synthase. Citrate synthase, the enzyme that produces citrate in the mitochondria that on only has two fates. One is for shuttling for fatty acid synthesis. Another role is to turn over in the mitochondria and produce energy is actually regulated by deuterium availability. And there is actually a significant change in the free energy that is initiating the, the process. And using our technology, this is what uh, Gab, uh, Dr. Shumye was referring to, that actually we can measure this flux in patients now, or tumor cells um, in vitro. And I'm, I'm gonna talk about this tomorrow, yet w what is really interesting is that um, when it comes to um, enzyme uh, activity or flux data and the in vitro or in vivo grown cells which actually have these enzymes in place and how those enzymes are act actually modified or, or secondary modifications take place based on changes in metabolism themselves, just practically glycosylations, ac acetylations, those are all metabolism or intermediate metabolism dependent processes. Um, the kinases that are also responsive to metabolite concentrations are in, the, in, in cells have a great interconnection with the term concentration just simply because the flux or distribution of flux in metabolic net networks will change based on deuterium versus hydrogen or proton uh, ratios. And there's a new concept that is emerging uh, from our collaboration with the University of Pittsburgh, and, um, and that is that there's a 
there's a process which we call molecular crowding in tumor cells. So it's not metabolite crowding, but it's molecular crowding because it's not only the metabolites or the intermediates that are accumulating, but also their metabolic enzymes are accumulating. So when you upregulate, for example, citrate production in um, mammalian cells in response to lower deuterium ratios or concentrations, that citrate has to be processed one way or another, and obviously there's going to be enzymes which will be upregulated, who actually, which actually metabolize um, <coughs> uh, citrate, and some of those enzymes are enzyme complexes and are, and are just huge. So modifying um, some of the metabolic reactions that are related to intermediate metabolism and product synthesis eventually may crowd the system, not only the metabolites, but their metabol met metabolic enzymes. And because of the limitations of how many fatty acid synthase complexes, for example, the endoplasmic reticulum can hold, you can actually kind of choke up tumor cells once they already have an upregulated flux in, along those metabolic reactions. And those questions are really the interesting ones, just to find out or get closer to how the term depletion may affect a whole range of tumor cells. And I, I think tomorrow we're going to have some, yeah. at, at least we some are, we data are to, for show, to show the response okay. of tumor cells, yeah. to, just to answer some of these questions. Okay, thank you, thank you. Any other questions or <coughs> comments, please? No more than let's just thank the speakers of these plenary sections for their excellent contributions. And God will be proceed to say to tell us what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the next event will start uh, with, uh, an hour later, a half past six. Uh, there will be a concert for you, which will last about another hour. And after that, there you are welcome for, for the dinner. So please come and follow us.